this thing that I'm holding in my hand, this telephone, this camera, it is quite powerful. Um, social media is powerful. We can do something with this. If we want to change, we can really, truly make it happen. The use of her voice created a model that she was willing to speak um, and to record her voice. I think that sometimes women use their voice in so many ways and in their communities, but no one ever takes time to record it, whether that's written, audio, or video, and to have uh, Sandra's words still with us because she felt like her words were of value, and she recorded them, and she spoke them um, unapologetically and freely and loudly as she wanted to. That um, creates a model for me and for other women to do the same. And when we speak, to record them in, in manners that are important and that can be shown to other generations. To have courage, right, is to not just be bold, but it's also to have anger. And so you have to be willing to claim your anger and be passionate about it and speak on it. Because silence is deadly. Because Sandy spoke, she still lives. Because Sandy spoke, her voice is present. Because Sandy spoke, she continues to make a difference and change lives for not just women, for people of color, for marginalized communities, for those who are oppressed, and for those who do the oppression. So that's what it means to me for silence to be deadly. When I found out about Sandra Bland's death, um, one of the first things that came up for me and why I think it struck me and so many of my friends so deeply is because it could have been me. Sandra Bland and I are the, we're the same age, uh, educated, uh, middle class black women, and really there weren't a whole lot of differences between us. And when I talk to some of my homegirls who are also the same age, middle class, black women, highly educated, and we were taught from the time we were little that if we did certain things in a certain way, we could avoid things like that. That, you know, if we were educated, if we learned to speak well, if we, you know, got a good job and we dressed in a certain way, then we would be protected. Then, you know, the things that happened to Trayvon Martin and Mike Brown and Sandra wouldn't happen to us. And yet, it did. It happened to Sandra. And so when people tell me that if I speak a certain way or dress a certain way, when they tell me that respectability politics will save me, it angers me beyond no end because it didn't save her and it won't save us. I do agree with Sandra that it is time that we mobilize. It's time that we begin to see the value of each human being. And we begin to understand that black women are not just here to be violated and to be killed and to be just dehumanized, that we are people, that we are contributors to our communities, and we are contributors to faith and everything that exists. America couldn't exist without black women. Um, and until we begin to do the work that it takes that all black women are valued and that they're safe in every part of the world, America can never ever be great. I was really struck when watching Lemonade about the uh, seeing the images of Eric Garner, Mike Brown, and Trayvon Martin's moms with pictures of their sons, and I kept thinking to myself, where is Sandra's mom? And I think that as a black woman, as a black queer person, I question why we aren't talking about um, black women and how that relates to police brutality and how black trans lives matter. And I think that that needs to be a part of our conversation. I think that um, Central Land would be so proud of people who have come together to talk about justice, to talk about faith, to talk about how those things are synonymous and not separate. I think she would be extremely proud to know that there are young leaders trying to change the world, um, trying to end injustice and trying to continue on the work that she started, the noble work that she started. I think she would be so proud of us um, and I, I think that she's smiling down right now. That the legacy that I may leave is not just about me but how I affect generations to come. And so Sandra Bland's death is powerful that it still has that effect and will continue to have that effect and will never be forgotten in history and will continue to inspire people to move and be called to action. And there are many people that fall into her camp. She has joined those that camp of people who have died for us to inspire. And 
Whether or not that was the end all be all of what her purpose was, I don't know. But she has joined that camp. The death of those people who have inspired us to continue working, to continue striving, to never give up. So that's reminded in me, rejuvenated me, that no matter what the end result may be, to continue working because no matter what, it will have that effect. She thought they were important enough. Um, and, and that's a great reminder for me that my words are important enough because there are moments where I want to be silent. I think that my words don't have value, but they do. And I have to, and I have to be the chief member of that fact. I refuse to be silent because my voice must speak. There is absolutely nothing that you can adhere to, no law, no logic, no rules that are going to keep you safe from white supremacy. The only thing that is going to save us is to dismantle white supremacy, is to heal from the trauma that it has caused so that we can all get free. Respectability politics won't help you get free. I think she'd be really proud. I want to say thank you to Sandra as I feel her around me. Sandy speaks. She still speaks. Sandy still speaks. Sandy still speaks. She still speaks. Yes.